guys, today is a story of letting go of stretch goals. <laughs> um, I, I sew a little bit, not a lot and not very well, but I have a sewing machine and so I thought in order to save some money I was going to sew some of the stuff that I needed for the baby, um, which is good, right? And it was, you know, not that ridiculous of a goal, mostly I'm making really simple stuff. But, um, I <clears throat> basically, there are certain things I guess I, I didn't really feel like doing, uh, very much. Like, I don't feel like spending most of my evening sewing. Um, I guess I kind of got behind or whatever. And I can beat myself up about that. Um, or I can just kind of move on and, um, find alternatives. So today's video is a sew and tell where I'm going to show you everything that I have been uh, working on that I have finished and that I'm still sort of working on. Um, and I guess talk about the things that I decided to not bother sewing and the ways I got around that and, um, and kind of, yeah, why I decided to let go of those goals that seemed real. I mean, they, I could have, I could have gotten it done if I needed to. But there are reasons why I decided that it wasn't for the best. So the things that I did sew and the things that I did not end up sewing. So first thing, I don't, I honestly can't remember if I've shown this in a video yet, but this is the blanket that I ended up knitting. Um, I started working on this like back when I got my positive pregnancy test in November. Um, and then I put it off for a few months and then I started really, really working on it in earnest. It was frustrating at one point when I realized that my measurements were off and it was going to be bigger than I thought, but then it ended up being smaller than that estimate. So, um, yeah, this is the pattern. I went with white so that, um, because like I said, I didn't, I started before I knew if we were having a boy or a girl and I didn't want to have to wait. And also like the plan is if she falls in love with it, then it's hers. But if she could kind of take or leave it, then, um, we'll use it with the next kid and until somebody claims it as their levy. Um, I'm not going to make another baby blanket. This one's just, you know, one of those normal ones. It's like a yard by yard, maybe 40 inches, something like that. And it's pretty and I like it. She's honestly ended up with way more blankets than she's going to need. Um, my much more prolific aunt crocheted her two different blankets. Plus the other ones that we got as gifts and different kinds of things. And that's not even counting like swaddles and receiving blankets. That's just like the thicker ones. And as a July baby, she's not going to need a lot of really warm blankets. But, um, you know, it was a nice thing that I was able to do for her. So. So I'm not sure if I mentioned, I probably have mentioned that we're planning to cloth diaper. Um, most of the reason why I even considered it in the first place was because um, I use cloth pads myself, which you have seen if you've been following my channel. I may have already reviewed the pads that I made. So, okay, let's start there. I was going to sew pads for myself, um, but then just decided that like I, didn't need that kind of fuss, and I got a really good deal on some Creations by Five pads. <laughs> so I ended up uh, just going with that, and I did an unboxing, and I have promised a review, which by the time this video goes out, I may have already gotten to, but I cannot, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, because I'm filming this in advance. Um, so that is one of the things that I decided to not bother sewing, and that took a lot off my plate. Um, so we're doing the cloth diapers and at first I was thinking that that was something that I could sew because like I've made a lot of my cloth pads and it was pretty easy. I thought maybe diapers would be the same. But looking into it, all of the elastic involved, um, it's just I think a little bit more complicated and I think the stakes are just a little bit higher, you know? It's not just like a stain on my panties but it's like, you know, a, uh, a blowout uh, and other people are going to have to deal with that and not just me. So I figured let's play it safe. I'm going with um, 
pre-folds and covers and I bought newborn a newborn stash on Amazon and I'm working on building up a, a one size stash for when she's a little bigger um, but that did mean still that I needed like wet bags and stuff um, so there's a I was gonna make like a pale liner wet bag for the pale liner I was going to make like travel portable wet bags for diaper bags um, and I was gonna make wipe bags for holding pre-moistened wipes. Um, I purchased some PUL off Etsy like a while back um, and I had a little bit left but I was gonna have to buy more. I figured they have PUL at Joanne's perfect let's just go and do that. For those of you not in the know PUL polyurethane laminate is can't show you right now because <laughs> I used it all up. It's the waterproof material that the um, that goes on the inside of a wet bag or the outside of a diaper to keep it waterproof. And I had some for pads that I had used. Um, I ended up really realizing that, well, first of all, I'd heard some bad things about Joanne's PUL, like the brand they use, um, I forget what it's called, but that it kind of delaminates and it's not great. Um, and then like the price per yard was not going to be worth it. <laughs> I looked and I found online on Amazon even just some really affordable, still like cute patterns. Like, cause what I was just going to get like the plain white, um, PUL and it was just going to be boring. Um, but I was able to get cute ones for the same price or less than I would have paid to do it myself. And then I didn't have to do it myself. It was just two day shipping, you know? <laughs> so that is what I ended up going for for the wet bags but I did end up making the wet bags myself because I had just enough like literally just enough PUL just to make these um, so these are like portable wipe bags the idea is that you can pre-moisten here's what the PUL looks like, PUL looks like. Um, is that you can pre-moisten the wipes and keep them in here and then they won't leak I don't know if I did it right I think there's kind of too much of a gap around the edges of the zipper but because um, I wasn't really being fussy about the the finishing but I whipped these up and I figure I can use them and if it doesn't work wet I can always just use them dry so I made this one and this is just um, quilters cotton on the outside and then it's lined with PUL and this one this one I decided to put the zipper farther on one side um, we'll see which one I like better I'll try them both so the wipes that's what I'm actually working on here these are 8x8 flannel on one side, terry on the other, just turned and top stitched. And that's what I'm working on with this big stack uh, and what I'm working on like this very minute. Also a shout out to a cousin who made us a whole bunch of burp claws, basically the same way with the flannel and the terry, um, and so they're a lot bigger, and those are going to be a really big help and something else I didn't have to sew for myself. Um, and then finally, the last thing, and these are more of a pain than I expected, just um, breast pads for absorbing leaky milk. Um, I found this pattern for free. I will link below the the blanket pattern and the sewing pattern for this even though I'm pretty sure I've done that on another video I can't remember I've made so many videos over the last month or two um, this pattern is free and it's really simple um, you just sew a dart in a few different layers and then I don't have a serger um, so it's just a zigzag stitch around the edge but since I can't use my rotary cutter it just takes forever to trace and cut them all out and then dealing with uh, zigzag stitch is not my very favorite so I've made two sets um, this one has four layers and white stitching and this one has three layers and blue stitching so I can tell that they go together um, uh, and then I asked my mom to help me because I realized that she would um, and that it made more sense to do that so she is also making me several sets um, because she's amazing um, and I'm still going to make a few more for myself so that I have them here, you know, before the baby comes or if the baby comes early. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. This is just the story of how I decided that, um, 
I can scale back my goals and that it's uh, okay. <laughs> Basically, I am happy with what I've gotten done and what I will get done. And even at this very minute I were to go into labor, um, I think, you know, I've gotten enough things ready that it'll work. I'm not stressing about it and um, just trying to work a little bit on some of these every single day. These are the, um, you know, what the wipes, you, you wet them and then you use them with the cloth diapers and you can just wash them and reuse them. It's just easier than having to have a separate trash can for wipes and a separate pail for um, reusables. You just put it all in the same place, so. And they're very, very, very easy. I definitely appreciated having my uh, rotary cutter. I finally, finally caved and got one of these. And basically around the time that you started seeing the cutting mat um, show up in my videos, in the background of my videos, that was when I started using it because I couldn't be bothered to move it out of the way when I was filming. Um, yeah, that's all. That's all I've been putting off this video for a while because I was going to film it once everything was done. But then I realized it was a little bit um, boring and it would be much more fun to actually see me sew one of these. So this is what I just made. Yay, thanks for following me along. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Gosh, this maternity leave is almost over, so I don't even know what's coming up. Um, yeah, I hope it's good. <laughs> it's like my September plan with me. <laughs> All right, see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank you.